Praise the Lord. And good morning to everyone that is tuning in on this morning. We want to give God glory and give God praise for all of his goodness and for all of his mercy. On this morning, let us focus on Jesus. Let's give God glory and let's give God honor for all that he has done and for who he is in our life. Come on, wherever you are, amen, let's open up our mouths, let's clap our hands, and let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the saint, the Lord is worthy to be praised. On this morning, we want to welcome you to our 152nd annual session of our Middle Eastern District of the Original Free Will Baptist Annual Conference. Amen. We want to bring you greetings in Jesus' name on behalf of our presiding bishop, Bishop LaVon Hughes, for all of our bishops, our supervisors, pastors, and from all the saints from all around the country, we praise God for all of you that are tuning in on this morning. This is our virtual annual conference, and we have come this morning to give God glory, to give God honor, because the Lord has done enough to get praise out of us. And when we just think of the goodness of Jesus and just all of the things that he has done for us, our soul cries out, hallelujah. We thank God for saving us. Come on, wherever you are, at least just lift your hand and tell the Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you for his grace and thank you for his mercy. We are so glad to be coming live on this morning from the sanctuary here at Faith Temple in East Orange on behalf of our annual conference. And so on this morning, we want you to focus on Jesus, amen, and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This morning, we are going to be honoring our men, celebrating the men of God on today. Come on, let's give a shout out, amen, to all of the brothers in Christ, amen, throughout the body of Christ. We salute all of the good men of God. So at this time, we're going to ask our praise team if they will give us an opening selection. Amen. And following that, amen, we will be led in prayer by our sister Lucretia Roman. God bless. Amen. We come to bless the name of the Lord. And we know that it's because the blood that Jesus shed that we are here today. We thank God for being here on this morning. And we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. For he is good and he has been good to us in spite of all. Love! 
Hallelujah, we sing because we're happy, we sing because we're free. At this time, your sister Roman will come, amen, and lead us in prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for being an all-wise God, an all-knowing God, a forgiving God, a God who is able. We thank you because you are our Father, and we thank you for being so good to us and taking good care of us. Father, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins, Lord Jesus. Help us to be more like you, true disciples of your word. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for another year. God, we thank you for another day. God, we thank you for another moment. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to come before you, oh God, lifting up our hands before you, giving you the thanks, God, just for being alive. God, we thank you that we are gathered for this great occasion of our annual conference, Lord. We thank you that the family circle have not been broken. We thank you that we are saving yet alive. We thank you that you are healing and you are setting free and you are making whole. We thank you because you are the true and living God and beside you there is no other. God, we give your name glory because you are truly worthy. We find that there is nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody can do us like you, Lord, and we give you honor. We give you praise, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will rest on our bishop on this morning, oh God, that you would send him a word in the name of Jesus, that it would pierce hearts, Lord Jesus. It would change minds, oh God. It would hit the marrow of the bone, oh God. Somebody will cry out, what must I do to be saved, oh God. Somebody will have a little bit more to hold on, God. We thank you, oh God, for the rich word that will come forth, oh God, that will change lives, God, that will set someone free in the name of Jesus. God, we give you honor and we give you praise because there's nobody who can do us like you, Jesus, oh God. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bless our entire conference, oh God, that you will bless our leaders in the name of Jesus, oh God. We give your name glory and honor for this is truly the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all things. Cover us, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood that still works in the name of Jesus. We love you on today. We magnify you because you are the true and living God. In Jesus' name we pray and believe by faith. Amen. Praise, praise God. We thank you. Amen. Sister Roman for leading us in prayer. We thank God for all of the saints who have gathered today virtually in Jesus' name. And the Lord said, where there are two or three gathered in his name, there he would be in the midst. And on this morning, we just would like to recognize and honor all of the men of the original Free Will Baptist Conference. We thank God, amen, for our elders, our seniors. We thank God for all of our pastors and deacons, amen, all of our ruling elders and trustees and all the brethren who make up the household of faith. We thank God, amen, for our leaders, amen, our bishops and our supervisors. And we pray that, that the Lord's blessings and peace will continue to be upon our men, amen. We salute our men, amen, for taking care of their houses, taking care of their families, men that take care of the uh, church of God, men who are active in their communities. We praise God for good men, amen. And we know that there are few good men, amen. And, but yet we praise God, amen, for the Lord making us the man, man, that we have become today. Amen. So let's give it up for the good men. Amen. The men of God. Amen. That the Lord has blessed been to be within the body of Christ. Amen. We will also, amen, like to uh, remind all of you that on tomorrow, amen, we will be concluding our annual conference on Sunday morning. Amen. Tomorrow morning, amen, our presiding bishop, amen, will be bringing forth the word on tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. So let us please, amen, let us set aside time and let us focus tomorrow in morning worship. Amen. And yes. let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Tomorrow yes. there will be a dial in number that if anyone uh, would like to call in and listen to the service. And if you know of anyone that does not have uh, social media that you can let them know that they can dial in. That number is yes. 516-387-5242. 516-387-5242. 
516-387-8979. That number is 516-387-8979. And so on tomorrow, we want everyone meant to be a part of our virtual conference to hear from our spiritual leader, our presiding bishop. Amen. And we want everyone to be a part tomorrow following the morning service and following the message. Amen. Our presiding bishop, amen, will uh, perform Holy communi Communion. We will observe Holy Communion following the morning message. So let all of us please get our communion sacraments and let us be ready to observe our Holy Communion. Tomorrow, amen, we want to honor our bishop in our giving. So tomorrow through our Givelify of our conference and cash app, please, all of us, let us give a gift, amen, a blessing to our presiding bishop as if we were there at our headquarters on Sunday morning. Let us be a blessing to our bishop tomorrow in our giving. So, Amen. And last but not least, amen, every Saturday night of our annual conference, amen, we always rejoice that, amen, that the clock goes back. Amen. So tonight, amen, let us not forget to set our clocks back. Amen. We have an extra hour. So let us please uh, be on time for tomorrow's virtual service at 11 a.m. All right, God bless everyone. We're going to have another selection from our praise team. Amen. And following the selection, amen, we will bring forth the word. Amen. So let us, amen, focus on Jesus. And as the praise team comes, amen, we will worship the Lord and bring forth the word. God bless.
can see you face to face. There's no place I'd rather be than close to you. There's no place I'd rather be than close to you. Than close to you. How many realize you need to be, hallelujah, close to the Lord, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus on this morning. We're in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, 1 Kings, amen, chapter 17, amen, beginning at the ninth verse, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Here in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8, amen. And the word of the Lord came unto him, meaning Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Amen. And on this morning, amen, we would like to use for a subject you have enough you have enough amen as we go into our message we see that uh, the time that we are living in that we are living in a time of a pandemic and this year is a, a very peculiar year in which uh, that as we go through this pandemic it is a time for us to have our national election for our president and because of the pandemic, we are uh, voting early. We are all across the nation mailing in ballots, uh, casting our votes prior to November 3rd. We are selecting who we would desire to lead this nation for the next four years. 
And because of this peculiar time, uh, we need to know uh, who will be suitable to be the president of the nation. Uh, the times that we are living in are so uncertain that we are casting our ballot beforehand to be certain that our vote is counted. And so that is in the natural that we have, we are choosing before the date, before November 3rd, who we want to be the leader. But I want to ask you on today, uh, have you chosen who your spiritual leader will be? Have you made your selection prior to this pandemic who will be your God? Here we must understand that the Bible says that we are to choose you this day whom we will serve. And we need to make our selection prior to our trial. We need to make a selection prior to going through a storm. And here and when you make your selection, uh, it means that you are certain, hallelujah, that before the time comes, I am certain who I will follow. And here the times that we are living in, they are perilous times. We're in a time where we see there are hurricanes roaring uh, to our coastlines. We see wildfires are destroying our lands. We see unemployment is at an all-time high. There are earthquakes that are happening all around the world. And in a time like this, we must know who we serve. Here, when God allows calamities, pestilence, and places of employment to close, and the economy is affected worldwide, we need spiritual people that can discern the signs of the time. Uh, we must realize we are in unprecedented times in which we are learning to adjust and to adapt to the conditions and circumstances that we have never faced before. And even though this is our first time being in the pandemic, uh, yet our faith that we have has been tried throughout the ages. Uh, for the Bible lets us know uh, that in Hebrews chapter 11, how the saints, hallelujah, walked by faith and their faith was tested and they trusted in God. And those who believe on the Lord Jesus, we have that same faith, hallelujah, that no matter what we go through and how we go through it, uh, we know that our faith will carry us through. For the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, it says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And so regardless of the circumstance, our faith has been built for times like these. Hallelujah. Many times uh, when we get in a situation, uh, we want our faith to get us out of a situation, but not realizing our faith has been built to withstand uh, the season that we're in. Hallelujah. Uh, that the faith that you and I have uh, uh, were not made for the good times, but the faith that you and I have uh, was made for times just like this. Uh, when it seemed like the times are being drawn out and it seemed like like there's no end hallelujah our faith was built for dark days was built for lean days was built for sick days and, and here as we look in the bible in luke chapter 22 uh, Jesus talks to Peter in Luke chapter 22 verse 31 he says and the Lord said Simon Simon behold Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat he said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, he said, strengthen thy brethren. Here we see that Jesus does not try to deliver Peter from uh, the hour of temptation and the hour of tests, but yet Jesus prays that his faith, hallelujah, uh, withstands and holds out uh, throughout the entire situation. 
And so here we find that as believers uh, uh, that God is letting us know that Satan desires to sift us. He desires to destroy us. But yet God has given us, hallelujah, faith that can withstand this hour. Hallelujah. That God has given us faith, hallelujah, uh, that can withstand a pandemic, that can withstand 2020. Faith that can withstand sorrow. And so here, as we look at the scriptures, the Bible says uh, uh, that the Old Testament was written for our admonition. And so as we look at the old patriarchs, we see that as they walk with God, that many times we can identify uh, with their walk. And here the Bible has on record uh, the prophet Elijah, that in the time of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, it said that he prayed that it would not rain. Uh, he prayed that it would not rain for the people had turned from following after the true and living God. And here in, in Elijah's day, judgment had come to the land for the space of three years uh, by there being a famine in the land. And God allowed the uh, uh, heavens to stop, uh, send forth rain, and, and, and it caused a drought throughout the nation. And here God uh, yet in his judgment and dealing with the nation, God was still gracious, hallelujah, to those who served him and the prophet Elijah. For during that time, the Bible says that there were 7,000 uh, who had not bowed the knee to Baal. And here Elijah, who had to run for his life uh, throughout this time of judgment, uh, as he served God uh, uh, in obedience, uh, he was still being chased down uh, by Ahab. Uh, for anyone who preached against Baal and uh, did not serve Baal uh, was an enemy of Jezebel. For here we see uh, that during Elijah's time, this was a trying time for the saints spiritually. That as they had to walk by faith and not by sight, this was a test for Elijah. Uh, for here, Elijah must believe that God would supply and provide uh, all of his needs. Uh, that even though Elijah prophesied and said it wouldn't rain, and even though he prayed that it would not rain, Elijah was also a part of the situation going on in Israel. And we find that as Elijah now uh, is making his way through the land, that as he was down by the brook Cherith, uh, the Lord tells him to go down to Zarephath. And he tells him to go there because he says, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee or, or to provide for you. And so as he goes there to Zarephath, which is in Zidon, which is a uh, uh, Gentile territory, people who do not serve God, uh, Elijah is going to have to convince this woman, hallelujah, to believe in the God that he serves. And so here the Lord tells him that he has to go down to Zarephath. Uh, well, Zarephath is peculiar because the name Zarephath means smelting place. It means uh, uh, refining metals. Uh, it is a smelting place where they were blast furnaces and they would cause uh, uh, iron to be smelted and brought together as one. And here when God brought Elijah down to Zarephath, he was merging uh, two backgrounds together. He was merging an Israelite who was a prophet uh, to a woman uh, uh, who did not serve God. And here God was merging two backgrounds together that normally would not associate with one another. And he was going to allow one to connect uh, to the other. Uh, he was going to allow one who had faith to connect with someone who lost their faith. Uh, he was going to merge one that was strong in the Lord with someone who needed the Lord. And during this peculiar time, uh, uh, Elijah could not be self-righteous or be bougie, but, but Elijah, hallelujah, had to humble himself uh, because he did not know where his help was coming from. 
Uh, I want you to know there comes a time that as we walk with God, that no matter how spiritual you are, uh, that you've got to humble yourself uh, because you don't know how God's going to make a way. You don't know where God uh, is going to work things out. You don't know what God's next move is. Uh, and God may send you in territory that you've never been. God may cause you to deal with people that you are not used to dealing with. Uh, and so here, uh, Elijah now has to deal with this uh, Gentile woman. And so here, God sent Elijah to a widow woman uh, uh, who before the famine undoubtedly had food and had enjoyed the comforts of life. Uh, like many Americans, she probably was used to having more than enough. Uh, and during the time of plenty, she was uh, uh, enjoying the comforts uh, of that time. But it does not say uh, uh, in the text uh, when she lost her husband. But the Bible tells us uh, that she was a widow and now it's a famine. Which now lets us know uh, uh, that her situation has been magnified. Uh, her, her problems and her difficulties and her challenges of life uh, has been uh, magnified. And, and she evidently uh, uh, had food before the pandemic. She evidently had food before the famine. But now uh, uh, she is clinging to the leftovers uh, from the time of plenty and has to ration how much she uses uh, because she doesn't know when uh, she will get any more food. Uh, isn't it something how God will bless you in a certain season of life? Uh, and that's why we need to make sure we save our money. We need to be responsible because we don't know when seasons are going to change. And you don't know when you might have to live live off the what's left from the good times and so here now she has to live off of what's left over from the good times in the bad times and so now we see in our text we see that the famine has taken its toll on this woman it has taken its toll on her and she has endured this famine until it has taken her last. She has come to emotional and mental fatigue that has caused her to lose her will to fight. She has come now to a low dark place where she doesn't look for change anymore but she has spoken so much negativity to herself that she begins to accept her situation as permanent uh, and she has accepted her her demise uh, she has come to the place uh, where he, she has struggled so long uh, that she now says uh, I'm going to gather this sticks uh, and I'm going to make my food and me and my child we're going to die uh, that she has tried to figure out how she's going to survive she has tried to figure out how she's going to make it uh, but now she's come to a place uh, that she has spoken death to herself uh, she has spoken to feet to herself and but yet while she has come to the place to gather sticks so she can eat her last supper she crosses paths with the man of God uh, she didn't realize that God uh, had already spoken a word over her life uh, that God had already spoken a word about her to the man of God and somebody today might be in a dark place and you might feel like giving up but you do not realize that God has already spoken a word over your life for Jeremiah 29 and 11 says for I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end somebody need to say God is thinking about you somebody need to know that God got you on his mind God has plans for you come on and God God is going to work that situation out and so here when she meets the prophet uh, he begins to speak to her and he asks her if she would bring him some water and she consents 
to it and she begins to get him some water. Then he asks her would she bring him a morsel of bread. And so in 1 Kings 17 verse 12, she says, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And she said, I'm gathering two sticks that I might go and dress it for me and my son that we might eat it and die. Well, here, look at what she says. She says, I do not have a cake, but I only have a handful of meal and a little oil in a jar. She says, I only have two sticks that I'm going to make some bread with. She stakes her condition that her condition is minimal. She says it's small and it's limited. She speaks lack. She speaks small. She speaks limitations. She speaks defeat over her house. She speaks death about her family but she does not realize she has enough in her house because everything in her house is enough for God to work a miracle in her life I pray y'all with me here. Uh, Here, uh, the meal in the barrel was flour uh, that represented the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, She did not realize the bread was a carbohydrate uh, that gives energy uh, and that Jesus uh, is the substance, hallelujah, to our existence. Uh, She didn't realize that the oil in her house uh, represented the spirit of God, uh, uh, which the oil would lubricate the pain will prevent the bread from getting stuck in the pan Uh, and everybody needs the oil of the Holy Ghost uh, to keep us from getting stuck uh, in our situations Uh, here she had two sticks uh, that she was gathering uh, which was made to use to uh, uh, to burn to cook the bread Uh, and these two sticks represent the cross uh, that Jesus died on Uh, and so when you put Jesus uh, on two sticks uh, and when he's offered up as the bread of heaven Jesus cannot stay in the pan which is the grave because once the oil of the spirit comes to the grave he has to rise from the grave somebody needs to realize that you're not going to die in your situation that the only thing coming out of this situation is resurrection somebody got to say you're going to rise tell somebody say you got to rise you got everything going on for you uh, to rise uh, for the anointing will not allow you uh, to be stuck where you are uh, you need to stop speaking defeat uh, over your life uh, and start to speak in, speak in life over yourself uh, you need to say I shall not die but live uh, to declare the works of the Lord uh, here somebody need to know that the only thing that's coming out of this situation is a resurrection I'm already seeing the bottom. You can't get any lower. You can't get any worse off. So the only thing for me to do is rise. The only thing for me to do is for resurrection. Tell somebody, say, there's resurrection coming your way. That I have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you but here we see now in 1st Kings that after she has stated what she does not have she states that she only has a handful of meal she states I only have a little oil in the jar and I only have two sticks well the prophet now responds in 1st Kings 17 verse 14 he says thus saith the Lord God of Israel he says the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. When Elijah hears her declaration, he pronounces the word of God to reverse the confession that came out of her spirit. Uh, Elijah has to get her to believe because her faith is going to help keep him alive. 
Oh, have mercy. God said there's a widow woman down there that's going to take care of you. But this woman is talking death and defeat. So Elijah says, I got to speak life to her because in order for me to live, she got to live. And somebody need to realize the people that you're connected to, you got to speak life over them because if you're going to walk with me, you got to live. Come on here, somebody. Uh, so here we see uh, that Elijah must resuscitate her faith uh, in order for him to live through this pandemic. Uh, and we need saints who have power to speak life over someone in your Zarephath. Uh, uh, that we need saints uh, to realize that you got the power to reverse everything uh, that was spoken over your life. Uh, that you got the power to reverse everything uh, that the enemy is trying to do but look at this Elijah looks at everything she says she has left and he tells her three things to do with them and we're closing he tells her three things he number one he pronounces blessing over the barrel of meal uh, uh, so number one uh, he expresses faith uh, over what she had uh, uh, so in other words uh, uh, what you need to do in your time uh, of trial you need to express faith uh, over what you have I uh, hear Elijah pronounces blessing over the barrel of meal uh, and over the jar of oil uh, notice uh, she said she had a handful of meal uh, and she said I only have a little oil in the jar but Elijah said you have a barrel of meal and you have a jar of oil in other words Elijah says the barrel is not half empty you do not have a little bit you have more than enough you got to learn to speak those things that are not as though they were stop looking at your situation as not enough Stop looking at yourself as too small and stop saying I only have a handful and say I have a barrel full. Say that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. So here Elijah sees the barrel and jar full. He stops expressing doubt. He stops expressing fear and failure over your barrel. And you need to speak what you need your barrel to be. Lord have mercy. Uh, if you need your child to be saved, stop saying your bad kids and start saying my child is strong. My child is blessed. My child is saved. If you need your money to be blessed, stop saying I don't have enough and start saying I'm waiting on my breakthrough. Start saying that God, hallelujah, is going to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all, I can ask or think. For Psalms 37 verse 18 says the Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. Somebody needs to know that God has pronounced blessing over your barrel. That you need to express faith over what you have. I don't care if it's a hoopty. You need to thank God for that little raggedy car and say this car gonna get me from point A to point B thank God for that job and say this God this job is God's resource to take care of me well not only did she say express faith over what you have but number two you need to expand what you have somebody say expand what you have well here now she goes to do what Elijah Elijah says do and the bread begins to multiply in her hand and as she obeyed the Lord she begins to see increase and somebody wants increase before you obey because you need to be motivated by sight but you must realize that when you do what God say then increase will come 
I stop looking for increase before obedience and obey then you'll see increase she takes the bread like Jesus did with the two fish and five loaves of bread and she obeyed God's will and it expanded in her hand to feed more than it was made for we serve a God that can take a little bit and do more with it than it was intended good God almighty we serve a God that can take a little bit two fish and five loaves of bread and expand it until it feeds 5,000 Paul said now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think here God wants you to know that God can expand that paycheck to do more than you thought it could do God can expand the gas in your car that you thought you didn't have enough God can make the gas stretch God can expand the food in the refrigerator and God can expand your health and somebody need to know not only can he expand material things but God can expand spiritual things that even in this pandemic God is expanding your joy he's expanding your faith he's expanding your victory somebody say expansion God is taking joy that I had in the sanctuary and God is letting it enlarge itself that I gotta use it in my house I gotta use it while I'm in the kitchen and things that were supposed to only work in one situation God said I'm gonna let it work somewhere else somebody need to know that you have more than enough well not only do you suppose to express faith over what you have and not only can God expand what you have but last God will extend what you have here God says that this meal in the barrel was going to last until the famine was over God said that this meal was going to last until the rain would come that what was in her barrel and what was in her jar had long shelf life God extended the expiration date because every morning there were new mercies that she was going to see somebody need to realize that God has extended your shelf life you should have died a long time ago you should have thrown in the tower but David said I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living I'm still here because God is extending grace and mercy but the provision that God had given her was going to be extended until the famine was over well the question is how would you know when the famine was over well what was the indication that the famine was over you knew the famine was over when the rain came somebody need to know that this extension is going to last until my next miracle comes somebody need to know that this extension is going to last until my breakthrough comes this means the provision is going to last until God opens up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing say I got enough I may not be rich I may not be famous but I got enough to keep me going until God turn it around God is going to extend your blessing until your breakthrough comes you have an extension to take you through the pandemic that if we go through a second wave that's all right but Isaiah said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength we shall mount up 
on wings of an eagle. The longer we stay in it, the stronger we get. The more we afflicted, the more we grow. And so the day that Elijah went to Mount Carmel and he got down on the ground and prayed, Elijah was facilitating a transition in season. Elijah began to pray in the spirit and he began to call the end to one season and the releasing of a new season. Elijah got on his knees and he was binding the famine and he was loosing the rain. He was binding the lack and he was loosing overflow. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Say it. So he, Elijah, was binding and loosening. And as he prayed, somebody need to know that prayer is going to take you out of your old season and bring you into your new season. The Bible says that when he kept on praying, he prayed seven times until his servant finally saw a small cloud the size of a man's hand. But that's all right. We don't despise small beginnings. We thank God for small clouds because I've seen them stretch a little bit of meal. I've seen them take a little bit of oil. So if he show me a small cloud, I know that God can expand the cloud. Somebody say, God can expand the cloud. A small cloud is still enough. A small cloud is enough to turn your life around. A small cloud got my blessing in it. A small cloud got my promise in it. So hold on to what you have. Hold on, you have enough till your breakthrough comes. Hold on, you have enough till God turn your situation around. Hold on. You have enough to take you through the sorrow. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy, somebody say joy, somebody say joy is coming in the morning. So I thank him for the little bit I got. And if I can praise him with a little bit, when the overflow come, I can give him glory because I've seen the lightning flash. I heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, still fight on. He promised, come on, let's give him glory. He promised, yeah. Hold on, hold on. God is expanding. God is extending. It's gonna rain long enough. God won't let you embarrass yourself. God's gonna take care of you until he turn it around. So you don't have to wait till the battle is over, but you can shout now. Learn to shout with a little bit of meal. Learn to shout with a little bit of oil. And when you see the cloud come, don't wait till it get big, but thank him for the little blessings. Thank him for the little miracles. Come on, let's give him glory. Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody need to say, I have enough. You have enough. You have enough. You have enough. Hallelujah. You have enough, hallelujah, to hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey. Hallelujah. You got enough. I 
I know you want a miracle. And I know you want to see increase and overflow. But God has put enough in your spirit to ride this situation out. Hallelujah. Come on here. That though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah. How many know that you got enough? Come on. You need to start thanking him for what you already have. You need to start thanking him for what you already got. You need to start thanking him for what God has already done for you. You need to thank him for what God has already blessed you with. And when you start thanking him for the little bit, start speaking over it. Saying, I've got more than enough. Speak over your health. Speak over your family. Speak over your life. Come on, let's give him glory. Hallelujah. It's going to last till the rain come. Hallelujah. 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 I feel a shout. Free will Baptist, I feel a shout. I see the small cloud. But I thank him for the small cloud. Yo. Well, help yourself.
The Lord took that little bit of meal and he stretched it. And God gave her a testimony. And God is giving us a testimony right now. And this, this thing right here, this little mask right here, I said, when this is over, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this little mask right here. And when this pandemic is over, every now and then, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to remember how the Lord brought us. I'm going to remember how we were sick and the Lord healed us. I'm going to remember when we couldn't go to church, but we still had joy. We still had a praise. We still had victory. Hallelujah. Somebody that doesn't know Jesus as their personal Savior. Jesus died on the cross. You don't have to work to be saved. You don't have to work to be forgiven. Hallelujah. But God loves you just as you are. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus died for you. And if you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, say, Lord, I'm sorry for all my sins. God, I repent me, turn from my sins. I ask you to wash me in the blood of Jesus. You give God your life. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. God has risen him from the dead. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from your past. Saved from your sins. Saved from your mistakes. But right now, you can pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my body. I ask you to forgive me of my sins right now. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Say, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins right now. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for, give, for forgiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that by faith, the Lord has forgiven you of your sins. If you believe it by faith, and you mean it in your heart, the Bible says thou art saved. There is someone that needs a church home. And you need somebody to cover you. You need a church home. We want you to, you can email at OFWB as in boy, M as in Mary, E, D as in David, at gmail.com. OFWB, M E D, at gmail.com. You need a church home. Amen. Any one of our churches in our conference. Hallelujah. You can come and we will cover you, help you grow in the Lord. I pray the conference is encouraged this morning. And Mama Horsh, that you have enough. God has been good to us long enough. Yeah, if we go through 2020, we're going to be all right until 2021. Yes, sir. We got enough. We got enough. Until God bring us out. I got enough joy. I got enough word. Hallelujah. We got enough in us. God is going to take care of you. Let us remember on tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. is the conclusion of the whole matter. Our presiding bishop, Bishop LeVon Hughes, is going to bring the word. So all the free will Baptist churches, let's tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Let's remember our Holy Communion, following a message. Let's be prepared to take Holy Communion together virtually. 
And let's remember tomorrow to be a blessing to our bishop. Amen. Let's be. Amen. Give the give fire cash app be a blessing to our presiding bishop. We love you today. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, you have enough. Come on. You got enough. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit let it rest, let it rule, and abide with the saints both now and forever. Let's all say amen, amen, amen. Have a good day in Jesus. We love you, church. God bless you.